Okay, this is René Pickard speaking and today I want to do my first screencast and show how to use a Grave database called Neo4g uh, with Eclipse and together with Google Web Toolkit. Um, so I start a new web project, uh, which I do here. And I give it a name, which would be Neo4j uh, in GWT. And I choose a package name, which is Neo4j in GWT package. And I want to use Google Web Toolkit, but I don't want to use the Google App Engine, so I deselect it. And we want to generate the GWT project sample code. So we finish this, and uh, right over here in our Project Explorer, there are some new files created. Let's have a look at them. There are some source files and there's especially the client-sided code and the server-sided code. The client side co the client side code will be translated to JavaScript and run on the client. And since we want to use Neo4j as a library, we want to work in the server-sided code and do remote procedure calls. So let's have a look at this file. But what we do first is we're gonna see if the project will run. So we do run as we run as a web application. As everyone knows, in GWT I will now receive an address which I can copy to the clipboard and open in a new browser. So now the site is loading and we we'll wait for some seconds. I don't know why it's so slow on my computer. Okay, so the project is here, and I send something, and the server replies with hello, trouble, GWT user, I'm running Jetty, blah blah blah. So we close this, we go back to our Eclipse project. So the first thing we need to do is we need to include um, Neo4j libraries. We do this by build path, configure build path, and here we're gonna go to add libraries. And I want to have a user library, which I choose. So here the Neo4j library is already there because I downloaded it already. If it wasn't there, I would click on user library and here on new. But now I take this one and if I edit it, I could set the name, but I could add the jars. So here on this path, I selected all the jars, so they're already in there, which you can see here. So I press OK, the libraries are there. I want to use this library. I click OK. So now I have included the library and I have now have to change the code here. So what I do is that I basically want to follow this code or this project from the Neo4j getting started with Java Wiki. So first I need to create an enum which would be public enum my relationship types implements relationship type and there's going to be only one relationship type which is nose so now Eclipse is already not happy because it doesn't know relationship type but it already suggests to import it from org.neo4j.graphdb which I do so now I've included it and now I go to this part of the source code and I create a grave database service object which I call graphdb which is supposed to be a new embedded graph database and I give it a location which would be var dot uh, graphdb um, you have to know in Neo4g you can either run the embedded server which would run in your Java application or you can have a standalone server. So here again it is not happy but it is suggested to import this package and also to import the embedded grave database package which I can do. So now everything is fine here. 
Now I want to start a transaction, which I have to do to do some calls on the database. Transaction tx equals graph db dot begin transaction. And again, I need to include a package, which I will get from here. So now in Neo4j, all the statements are going to be in a try clause. And um, what you always have to do is you have to say that the transaction is ready, so you finish it. So what kind of um, queries do I want to do? I want to first create a node, which I call first node, which is a graph db dot create node. Then I have a second node, which is graph db dot create node. So again, the node is an object type which I have to include here. There are many object types that are suggested, but if I scroll down a little bit, I also find those from org.neo4j.graphdb, so I include those. Next, I want to do a relationship between those nodes, so I do a relationship, which I call rel. So this goes from the first node. Here I want to create a relationship, so it goes to the second node, and I have to give it a type, which would be my relationship type dot nose. Now I want to set some properties. Relation ship is not known, so I have to uh, include it again. Now I want to set some properties, so on the first node I can set a property which I would call message, and I set it to hello. On the second node, second node, I can also set properties, which also has the key message, and I set it to world, as you might have expected, and it's the same as the Neo4j example. Now I can also set a property on the relationship, rel.set property. Again, I use the key message, and uh, well, Neo4j suggests to do brave Neo4j, so I give them the credit because they do the great, great library. And basically, that's it. Um, now I want to output this, and I can't do a system out, but here, this is the string that you could have seen displayed in this GWT. Um, dialog. So what I do is I create a string here, which I call result, and I set it to zero. Scroll down. So now I add all those strings. So result equals result plus first node dot get property property and the property had the key message and I want to do the same thing with the other node in the relations. So I do it with the second node, and I also do it with the re my relation. So basically that's it, but I also had to write something on the database, so that's why I do a tx success for the transaction. Everything is fine. My app is still running, so I close it. Um, I save the project. Now I want to rerun it as a web application. So I go here, say run as web application. Now the URL is coming back here again, which I already had in my browser. So I go back to this window. It said it disconnected, but I can refresh the page, see what's happening. not quite loading, so we'll wait a little while. I don't know why my computer is so slow on this part of GWT. That's very unusual. OK, 
Okay, now it's here. Uh, so if I now send something to the machine, oh, it will s still say hello GWT user, but actually it did all the new for G part because I forgot something. We can double check this and look in the war folder because if I refresh the war folder, which happens here, it has created this folder var and graph db, which was exactly the address I added here. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to exchange this hello by my string, which I called result. So again, I stop the server, save the application, run the application again as web application, wait for the URL so the server is up. Now I refresh the page and probably it again takes very long. Very sorry for you to wait here. But if I now send uh, something to the server from by clicking the button, it should output hello brave new for j world. And I hope we see this and then we can start on working with Neo4j in GWT. So I send something to the server and now it loads a little bit and it says hello world brave Neo4j. Um, which is basically because I know why <laughs> I first said first node, second node and then the rel. So it said first hello world brave Neo4j. Well, that was my little screencast, and I'm happy if it was helpful for you. Um, I don't know why, for me, it was such a big mess to uh, include Neo4j to GWT, because you saw it was basically very easy, but um, have fun with it. <laughs>